It's time for Everything Noob, your source for all things gaming. Once again, it is time for the Everything Noob podcast. I am Vortec, joined this evening by Dreadlow and Lulu P. How's it going, you two? Good. Good. They're upset Why with me. Lito change his name? Oh, well, he doesn't like Lito anymore. Dreadlow, I like Dreadlow. I was going to say, did Lito get married? It's, <laughs> yeah, Congratulations! It's like. just the way it is. So... <laughs> A lot of, not a lot of stuff going on, I'll say, but we do have a few things to talk about, and we're going to jump right in with something I'm not very excited about at all. Halo Spartan Assault. Do you guys know anything about Halo Spartan Assault? It's on the Windows phone. Only on yeah. the Windows phone. That's all I that need to no know. That no one uses. That no one will ever, ever, ever use. <laughs> what, is there like three phones that have it? <laughs> Oh, wait, I, I don't know. I don't pay attention. Windows phone. Really? Yeah, they love it, but hmm? it doesn't do anything. Oh, <laughs> no! It's the, Windows is trying way too hard to get people on the whole Windows 8 bandwagon, and I think this is all Halo Spartan Assault is. Just it, to problem. grab people. I want to get a Windows phone just so I can get a Halo. Exactly. <laughs> get out. That's that's what sold Xbox for me. I'll, I'll be honest, like, the original Xbox, Halo 2, that's when I bought an Xbox. Because everyone got me into Halo, and then like, Halo 2's coming out soon. And I that's when I bought everything. And Well, it's their, it's their biggest franchise. Well, yeah. But isn't it? the Xbox so. is a console that doesn't require any kind of monthly contract or anything. Well, unless you get Xbox Live, but you can buy an Xbox and buy a game, no big deal. You're not going to switch phone providers... To buy one stupid game. You're not. You're not, yeah. Who? <laughs> I said me. Oh, you would do oh, that. Oh, my phone came in? Oh. Oh, that's, yeah, I got a I, I uh, phone uh, with this phone. Oh, oh did God. you? <laughs> yeah. Did you really? You're going right to throw it down the garbage it's, disposal, right? Well, I, I wanted to have Halo. I had to have Halo. So oh, I, that's I got good. Yeah. So I got to change my number. And Look, I've got a whole life. Windows phone. My whole lifestyle, I got it. All, all my apps ain't gonna work in that phone, so, oh well. No, I, I just. Well, does anyone know about anything about the game though? Because from what I've seen, it looks like a top-down shooter. It looks cool. It looks cool enough. Didn't it just launch like yesterday? Oh, a couple, yeah, a couple days ago, if if okay. uh, if not yesterday. There was a, there was an Android game like that. It was kind of, it was called Commando something. I think I, I'm not sure. It was a long time ago. But I I put it on my phone. But yeah, it's 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 kind of like you go up to you know like barricades or whatever, and you and you shoot at enemies that are coming at you. So if it's like that, I can already get that on my Android. Well, yeah, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of ripoffs of it. And you know what's funny is those are gonna be more successful than the game itself because everyone has an Android or an iPhone, and no one really wants anything to do with the Windows phone because, again, yeah. Windows is third. They are behind the curve so far that no matter what they do, they are not going to get ahead at this point, I think. Uh, Windows as a whole, like Windows 8 is for, uh, for touchscreen environments, great for touchscreen, terrible for home desktop users. And then combining it with Xbox, of course, that's good for them, but Xbox is way too expensive compared to what the alternatives are, which is PlayStation 4, and then Destiny, right. which is by Bungie, which uh, some people would argue did a much better job with Halo than 343 did. I don't know. I liked I like 343's adaptation, but whatever. Destiny looks amazing, and that's going to be, you know, that's that's going to be the new that's Halo killer. Good. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> I decided a while ago I wasn't going to invest any more into Halo because I'm not buying an Xbox One. You and can I was always just... go online to Firefall and play Halo 2. <laughs> because it's you, just like it. You believe Firefall <laughs> plays very Firefall. very similar to Halo. Yeah, especially their PvP is very similar. I, I still got to try that game. Maybe tonight. You have to. Maybe tonight. To. Yes. Because, yes. Well, I'll teach you I'm not going to promise you. <laughs> oh. Leo, he's not going to. He likes to dangle that carrot, like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with you tonight," and then be like, "Oh, sorry, I gotta go back." No, I gotta go. I'm, I'm lit tired. He's got. Dan he's is gotta go. so flaky like that. He's gotta watch his little TV shows. And... <laughs> I don't have any TV shows to watch tonight. Oh my gosh, guys! I can't miss The Apprentice tonight. <laughs> hey. 
The Apprentice is over right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Then what? Now what is it like? America's Got fashion Talent. Fashion Runway. No. Oh, that's a, that's going on right now. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. the perhaps the worst season I've ever seen. That's why I watch the highlights on YouTube. You really need to watch America's <laughs> Next Top Model. I really think you and Tyra would get along great. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Tyra's great, uh. dude. What? What? Don't judge me. <laughs> I'm judging. <laughs> So yeah, well, Halo Spartan Windows Assault. Phone. I don't want it, and I'm glad that uh, I had a good laugh when I saw it was only going to be on Windows Phone because I know that's what they're doing. They that's that's the, their train of thought. It, how do we sell these phones? Well, how do we sell anything? Halo. Halo. We'll sell it with Halo. <laughs> it's kind of like exactly. every other company uses sex to sell things, and Microsoft uses they Halo. They use Halo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that is pretty sexy. <laughs> Halo. <laughs> I yeah. will preach it, and I will say it over and over again. Halo is my all-time favorite franchise, and it's why I wanted to work in video games. So I no look. Halo is a great franchise. It is. I'm I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just I think Microsoft is ridiculous. That's all. Well, yeah, yeah, it's Microsoft. They're they're, they're pulling at. Uh, That's why I have an iPhone. Yeah, you know I straws. I have been wanting to play Halo 4 because I know I'm not going to play another Halo game after that, and once. Halo 5 comes out, no one's going to play Halo 4, so I feel like I really should be getting my fix now, before it's too late. <laughs> but, you know, that's just... Yeah, maybe well, Firefall will fulfill that for you. <clears throat> maybe. Lito, no! Hey, I'm going to rub your nose in it and hit you in the newspaper. <laughs> what, if, what if I love Firefall, Lulu P? What if I just love it? and Get out. I'm going to rub your nose I think, in it. I think, I think I'm Lulu gonna... P will like it, too. She probably would. I actually just bought Trials Evolution today. Oh, yeah. Fireball I heard you raging at that. I got... love to buy it. <laughs> I got really <laughs> angry with that game. So what? I got stuck at one point. I had a game called Trials like, HD, it. and it was on the Xbox Arcade. And I, I guess it was, a, from that. it was a side-scrolling multiplayer, or not multiplayer, side-scrolling motorcycle game. And it was fun, but yeah, I couldn't beat like the first two levels, and I was done with it. <laughs> Oh, you so know, you don't uh, want this? Because I was going to gift you the, my game. Cause I'm I was sure. Like, I was already frustrated with it. Wait, you can do that? You can gift your own game? Yeah, you can trade games in Steam. I actually gave a game to one of my friends. Yeah, they have it for a game. certain length of time, and then it goes back to you or something? No, you just give it to them. Oh, you're lying. You open that's a cool. trade between friends and your... <clears throat> no, I'm not lying, because that's how I gave that gifted copy. that Because like, when I got Don't Starve for my birthday, I got a gifted copy or an extra copy. And I didn't need it, so I had a friend at work. I was like, hey, do you want this game? And he's like, yeah, I've been wanting it. And it's like, okay. And then we got on Steam, and we opened a trade. I dropped it in his inventory and hit send, and boom, he had it. And you couldn't play it anymore? Well, no, I had my, my copy, and then oh, I had the extra copy. I gave him the extra. So there was an extra copy of games anything. you already have that you already played. Uh, from yes, what I understand, you can do that with games you already have. And they already they do have an option where you can actually you can actually loan it to your friend for a certain length of time, and after it expires, then it, then they can't play it anymore. Where are these options? Like, you run a video game podcast, and you didn't know this. Where are these <laughs> options in Steam? Because nowhere in Steam do this? I see this. Like when I open Steam, I don't see a thing pop up and say, "Would you like to share this game with a friend?" It's very, oh, no, you have I, to initiate a trade. I read we'll it somewhere. We'll try it after the podcast. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I think it it might be uh, maybe it's not an upcoming feature or it's already there. But I, no, I it's think in there. is it I new? Read something. Oh, has it? How how old is it? Yeah. Because this was back in March that I did that. Oh my gosh. And I remember like looking it up online, like exactly how to do it, and there's like articles from last year dating, like, oh yes, this is how you do a trade. And I'm like, this is old. <laughs> No this one, whole technology. No one ever told we me this. Them. Well, well, I got that's ridiculous. Tons of games. That... <laughs> Leo, will you give me Warframe? Will you loan Warframe me your copy is free. of Warframe? Isn't it free? <laughs> it's free. <laughs> I'm trying to be funny, guys. You're not. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> trying to be the the comedic relief. <laughs> we don't need that when we got Leo. God knows I'm not funny. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this off right now. <laughs> I will turn this off. I will stop this car and turn it around. <laughs> right. Don't make me turn. Don't make me slap don't you. Don't make back me turn there. this car around. Don't make me turn this car around. So I will do it, and you won't get your McDonald's. It's episode forty, <laughs> and we're excited to launch a new feature to the show. I've been talking about it all week on the blog and Twitter and everything, 
And it's not really because it's episode 40, it's just because I found out I could do it, and it happened to be episode 40. So I know episode 40 isn't as big as a milestone as, I don't know, 50. We'll do something cool for 50. But this, this I feel, is really fun. We're trying to open up the floodgates for audience interaction. And we've always had the Write Us section on everythingnoob.com. You can go there and just, if we ask a question, you can answer it on there, and we'll read it on the show. Well, using Google Voice, I've figured out how to g provide the show a phone number. And I've set it up so you can call the show, a voicemail will instantly pick up, and you can leave your thoughts on something via voicemail. And we can play it on the show if it's appropriate. If it's not, I can just block you. <laughs> but What's the voicemail? I need to know. What is the number? Okay, so the number is 210-570-NOOB. No, I mean, like, what, well, that's good, too, but what's, like, the voicemail? Like, who answers? Is oh, it, like, it's me. <laughs> I want to go back to last week's podcast, but I don't. But I do. Yeah, yeah so if you want to actually <laughs> interact or hear Dan's voice, you can call it, too. Yeah, so. if you just want to listen to my voice, <laughs> the same recorded message over and over. Forget that I have there a YouTube you channel with, you know, 800 videos on it. <laughs> I just yeah. figured it was going to be, like, everything boob. Everything boob. <laughs> And our, our boom body is going to answer and like this is side boob with boom body. God. <laughs> Episode thirty nine. Go download it. <laughs> there you go. Cross promoting uh, old episodes. But yeah, so Fable two one zero five seven zero new right. Yep. Easy That's to remember. And long distance fees easy. may apply. You can always text the number as well, and we can read your texts on on there but if you want to write longer you can go to now instead of write us it says contact us on the website and you can write us there or you can use the phone number so yeah and uh, yep. we can't, we're not going to do anything we're not going to answer the phone ever and we're not going to answer texts it's just for us to use on the show so there is that for Correct. you it's there Frank call Canada? well I know because there are some people who actually listen to the podcast on their phones and it's just convenient for them so they don't have to stop or sit there and, and type in a question with their little Oops. keyboard on their phone. They can just dial the number and leave a message. It's awesome. Yes. I'm, I tried uh, to talk Dan into getting a 900 number. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't know what that was. 900 976 noob. <laughs> don't call that number because it's probably bad. God. <laughs> no, do it. Don't, Lido. don't listen to Lido. He's insane. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so, but, yes, uh, that is our new our new uh, thing we're doing. If you want to be yep. a part of the podcast, call us. What We have a question. We're going to ask ourselves the same question later. In fact, we'll just, let's just keep them hanging on that because yeah. we want to use yeah, this question. Yeah, we still question. got more topics to talk we about. We got more topics to cover exactly. before we get to it, but just stay tuned because we have a question to ask it's you. Pretty Pretty fun question too. Yes, and I you think can call. A lot and, of people would be involved. You can call and leave your voicemails. So, all right. Moving on with the next thing we gotta I mention, got to mention. You have a glove. Not what we well, were. Well, we said mention. moving on. I thought that was an important well, topic. Well, that wasn't on our list, but I guess we could talk about that. What's your glove? What's that all about? Uh, it's this. It's a glove. Okay, now we're done. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one finger glove. That's the creepiest from, thing I've ever seen. From, no, it's for my Wacom tablet. Don't judge me. <laughs> it's for my it, Wacom Cintiq because it has a glass special. top and my hand sticks to it when I'm drawing. So, next topic. Yeah. Next topic. We <laughs> did it. We are just crazy so, tonight on episode 40. <laughs> this is just an interesting one that I wanted to mention real quick. Disney has got themselves a few uh, domain names and everyone's speculating on what this could be. They've they have uh, saved themselves or bought Star Wars Attack of Squadrons domains. So like Star Wars Squadrons dot org, Star Wars Attack Squadrons dot com, and Attack Squadrons dot com are some of the ones they've bought. And people are wondering if this is for a game, or if maybe this is the new Battlefront that's coming out, or it's the next movie. But what do you guys think? I personally think it's going to be a whole new game. I just think it's interesting how people find this stuff. That, that was the next thing I was going to say. Yeah, why? How? Who's looking for this? I mean, this people do. News. It did make news. People do. They check. They find uh, domains. Look for new domains to see what's going on. And and actually, it's a pretty good way of finding out information before it comes out. Micro and Chad thinks it's going to be. It's for game purposes. For gaming purposes. Oh. 
Could that's what it sounds like? It Attack of Squadrons. Of it sounds like a Battlefront like uh, expansion or something. Attack of the Squadrons. It just sounds something gameish. I don't know. It definitely sounds like a game. I don't think Star Wars Episode Seven would be called Attack of the Squadrons because it just doesn't make any sense. Mm -mm. The, it doesn't fit. Those titles are usually not. I don't know. That or it could be a new like TV show. I know they're trying to make another TV show, animated one or something. Hmm. Oh, that's um you're thinking Detours. Star no, Wars Detours. No, not no? that. It was something else. And now that I was, just, it was it just got new, like I just remembered it and I, I should probably look it up. It it was they were talking about it because that other show recently ended. And uh. it, like this one's been talked about now. So, that could be coming out. Star Wars live action TV series. Star Wars Underworld. I don't know. There's way too much on the way. You type in Star Wars TV shows on Google and you'll you'll have the problem I have right now. But anyway, yeah, I th I'm thinking it's either a whole new game or definitely Battlefront. The new Battlefront name. Because Battlefront was awesome. I was so excited to hear that they're going to be making another one. You guys play that? No. no? Battlefront, I've tried it. Battlefront is like a Star Wars version of Battlefield. <clears throat> yeah, that's why I didn't play it. That no, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was amazing. And the, my favorite levels are the ones with the ships cuz they have like these space battles. You jump in a ship and you can you can not only shoot people in the, in space, but you can board the enemy ship and kill people from inside. And I just it's like thought FTL. Th I thought that was the you coolest thing. You can actually thing. go into there. Nothing like FTL. Their... Are you kidding me? It's th it's 3D. It's a first person ship. Yes, yeah, 3D. You can fly into their actual area. And kill them all, and then use their stuff. <laughs> it's yeah, I, cool. you so can it's get like FTL. No, you can get in the guns that are mounted on <laughs> top of their spaceships and shoot down their own ships with them. It's fun. But it's not just specifically spaceships. I mean, you get out and you're a character as well. Exactly. It's not like some of these other ones that so bore me to death. So what you're saying? <laughs> it's not like FTL. No, no, that is like Spelunky. Oh my god. We should talk about that. I What is Spelunky? Because I don't know enough about it to say anything. Spelunky is like, a, it's a roguelike 2D platformer, and it originated from a game called Spelunker, which is a free PC game. You can actually still go get it on PC. I'm not sure of the website, but I, I, I swear if you just go to Google and type Spelunker, you'll find it. And it's like, it's a pixelated old, uh, older game. It's not like super old, but it's a, it's a roguelike where... You, you basically have to get through four worlds, but you only have four lives to do it. So let's say you get through world 1-1. One, one. And when I say worlds, I mean like there's, there's three levels to each world. So you have to get through 12 worlds or levels amongst four worlds and then beat a boss at the end with four lives. All with four lives, you're And you're basically a spelunker. You, you're, you're diving down into caves and you're trying to not like get killed by anything or run into spikes. Yeah. And it's a huge deal that it's coming to PC because it came out for Xbox Live Arcade last summer, I think. It was sometime last year. And it was just, it, it was amazing. It's basically the HD remake of it. Okay. So it's actually wow. sprites instead of pixelated now. And it's coming to PC uh, on August 8th. And, it's and they're actually introducing a new thing called a daily challenge where you basically compete against everyone on the internet to see how well you do. Which oh, is a lot of fun. But you only get one it. chance to do it too. So like, you basically have to play and get as much money as you can and as far as you can, in one chance. Is and this... if you ever like, if you go watch Twitch right now, you'll probably see a few people streaming it. It's the game is brutal. It is a ton of fun, but it's brutal. And it's got multiplayer, so we should all get it and play together. Are you talking? You like, go. is this really <clears throat> similar to Rogue Legacy? In some ways, it's probably a side scroll. It's, it's... I, I think it's a side scroller. It's like that. It's a, it's a side scroller in a way. It's like a side scrolling platforming roguelike. Cuz you just you dive through caves and there's snakes and there's spiders and Yeah, you know, Rogue whip, Legacy is roguelite. It's a roguelite. It is a geneal genealogical roguelite. Yeah. That's what I like about it. And like the only reason it's called a roguelite You're is both confusing the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> a roguelite has some of the qualities of a rogue game. What is rogue but game? But you, rogue is where uh, rogue, rogue, the, the term rogue originated from a video game called Rogue, and basically <laughs> what it was is that you traveled through the game and was, you had permadeath. So as soon as you die, you lost everything. So that's that's now become like a genre of games called rogue or roguelike. 
Okay. So Spelunky is a or yeah, Spel well, Spelunky -like. once you is a rogue lives are gone, that's it. Yeah, once you're once you're done, you're done. You lose all your items, you lose all your money, the game's over. You just start over. In Rogue Legacy, it's a rogue light because you still carry some of those items with you. Like that's how you upgrade your armor and stuff. So your character dies, but you notice when you play, you still have that armor and stuff because you've bought it. So you yep. still carry those items with you, but you don't carry like all your money, um, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of Knowledge is power. Scores. Yeah, speaking of Rogue Legacy uh, and side scrollers, that brings us to our next topic. And yeah. Segway. I wouldn't have known about this had Lulupi not told me about it. But every year, PAX does what they call the PAX 10, and they pick all these amazing, these 10 amazing indie games, and pretty much award them for being awesome. And then they pick one at the very end. And game of PAX. Do they Rogue already pick Legacy the one? Is in that list. Do what? Do they already pick the one game? No, they do that at PAX. Like what they'll do is that. <laughs> Tons of tons and tons of indie game developers submit their games. Out of all of those games, they play them. Pick ten out of those at PAX. They'll play those there, and they'll get people like every common day people who are coming to the convention to play it as well. Then you can submit votes. The the panels will submit votes. Blah blah blah. And then a few weeks later, they'll announce who was the PAX the PAX prime winner. Who was out of those ten games, which one was the crowd favorite, and which one won overall. And that's like for indie gamers, that's a huge huge accomplishment. It's kind of like the Oscars of indie games. The Oscars of well, indie games. It's, and looking at it's this, freaking though, awesome. I don't everyone's a lot more pasty and white and nerdy. It's like the game of the year for indie game. That's it's I, a big thing. I, at looking at this, I think Rogue Legacy is going to win. It very well. I don't could. know a lot it's of these good. other ones. Actually. I don't. I know, well, yes. just by looking at them, I don't know. Unfortunately, Gunpoint, you know. I've heard it's really good, but it's a short game. Very short game. Lovers yeah. in a Dangerous Space Time just looks oh. awesome. Very I want to. I don't know what that is, but I want to play it. Yeah, very colorful game. Co-op micro platformer for two or one players set inside neon spaceships, locked in battle with hordes of space baddies. Yes, whatever that is. Yes. <laughs> Rogue Legacy, I think, will be near the top. But I don't. I don't know if it'll take it. I don't know. I think it would be if it. If it doesn't, it'll probably be in second or third. I just I, because it's such a, a it's it's so different than than your standard side scroller. I think that it might have a chance. So ridiculous fishing is actually pretty good too. I want to see that too. It's on iOS, and I want to get that and see what it's all it about. Is. It's it's a lot of fun. I'll have to check you get it to out. Shoot fish in the air, and you get to upgrade. You can get a Tommy gun and shoot fish <laughs> in the air. <laughs> this is like a TV show. Crossing should be in this list. No, I'm kidding. No, no. <laughs> I think somebody should game. make an uh, anybody out there if you're listening you somebody needs to make a, a PC version of Animal Crossing call it whatever you want but make it similar to that game cuz that's cuz Lido awesome doesn't want to buy a Nintendo Animal <laughs> Crosswalk Animal Yeah <laughs> Critter Crosswalk Critter Crosswalk <laughs> I like that that's good we should market that let's do this let's, let's do this it, Yeah so anyway but yeah, looks like there's going to be some interesting games highlighted at PAX 10. PAX I, Prime is going to be a lot of fun. I'm sad I cannot go this year. I'm looking forward to seeing who wins out of that list of 10. But yeah, if you're interested in that, it's going to be linked in the show notes. And uh, we are very curious about these other games that aren't Rogue Legacy. But, I think yeah. they're all out now, so I think you can go get them. I think you can buy them. Probably. As of now. Well, it, yeah. If not all of them, most. They pro probably some most of them might even be green lighted on uh, Steam too, the PC ones, anyways. But it doesn't say. But neither does Rogue Legacy. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm looking forward to that. I know I like Rogue Legacy, and I may pick up some of these. I, I want to try that fishing game. Rogue Legacy is so awesome. <laughs> if you don't know what Rogue Legacy is, it's basically a side-scrolling game where you. I just you, talked about that. Yeah, I know, but you get it. <laughs> what I love about it, you didn't mention what I love about it, and that's you get a knight or a character, and he always has something wrong with him. Like, sometimes he's colorblind. Oh, he's got or, traits, yeah, yeah. He's got traits. He's, he's colorblind, or... <laughs> Vertigo or is my favorite. IBS. Everything's upside down. Or, uh... Irritable uh, bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> Farts every time or, he jumps. Yeah. And sometimes you're, you got two left hands. There was one that was, he was dyslex dyslexic? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tried and to read so something and all the text was <laughs> jumbled. It was all jumbled. <laughs> That's pretty cool. They really did a good job on that. I'm yeah. And, yeah, and some of those traits carry over too if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah, you get to pick from three children every time you die, and they all have awesome funny here's, traits. Here's the problem: you you don't have time to go make a family when you start playing a new character. So how does he you already have, have time children? to make a real life family when you start playing that game? <laughs> <laughs> Very true. I'm just saying. Touche. Touche. I've sold my soul to the devil. I think well, he already it. had a family, and he went out adventuring and died, and then his family kid took over. Maybe. I don't know. Pretty messed up family. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, so that was pretty much all the news. But we had a question we wanted to ask ourselves and also everyone out there listening for perhaps our new segment, which we'll launch in the next show if we get responses. So remember, you can call 210-570-NOOB and tell us if you could make a video game. Don't worry about financial limitations or any of that. What to you would be the perfect video game? Tell us. Go ahead. Contact us. Now. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, nothing's going to ring. Anyway, so Lou the P. I, I know, always wait for a ring. Why not? I, I want to ring. Well, it won't. It won't My ring. ringtone is now the theme of Doctor Who. I could, we could use that as a ring. That's what she'd want. She'd want a Doctor Who game. I want a freaking Doctor Who ringtone, and I want David Tennant to answer the phone on the other side and say, "Welcome to E Noobs. What's your answer?" <laughs> What's your answer? <laughs> that would be cool. What? What? That Don't judge me. Expensive. <laughs> no, David Tennant's British. He's super nice. He's technically, sorry. <laughs> so he'll He's do Scottish. it for free. He just doesn't show up to places when you're He's there. He's got the TARDIS! He can, he can appear right now and say, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> so, uh, Lulu P, what, what is your perfect game? See, this originated from me saying that I, sometimes I do this at work, and it doesn't really work because people don't have as much video game knowledge as me. So well, they're try just to, like, oh, I just dumb want it, it to be really good. I just want it to be really good. <laughs> try to dumb it down I for I just us. want it to be really good and, and make a lot of money. <laughs> it, doesn't really, it doesn't really do well. But I always told myself, because I'm like, I work in, in video games and film, that if, if I ever made my own indie game or something like that, the only way that I, I would figure out how I really wanted to do it is that, and I actually started doing this. I kid you not. I don't know where the notebook is. I have it somewhere. <gasps> it could be over there. <laughs> I'll save that for another podcast. But um, I wrote down things that I felt were crucial to video games in like different different ways. Like, do I want it to be like one character, one main character, two main characters? Do I want it to be a man, a woman, a cat, a dog, a, a, a robot? Like, I just put tons of stuff out there by categories. And then when I I said if I ever wanted to sit down and actually develop my own game, that I would I would rip them all like out of the notebook piece by piece, throw them in a hat, and draw them out. And whatever I came up with would be my game. Wow. I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. Because I didn't know. I personally, I couldn't really sit and think of of what I think would be a good game. I think platformers are great, but they're they're so overdone these days that that's kind of what people expect. So unless you're like Edmund McMillan and you're doing freaking Super Meat Boy, I don't think much really tops that. Um, yeah, that kind of helped the genre kind of take off. It did. I, I would definitely want a polygonal game. A what? Polygonal. Like with... 3D. Okay. <laughs> 3D what? in the sense of... Don't make fun of it. You're in Give 3D space. Words. It's made with polygons, which is called polygonal. <laughs> okay. Polygonal. And today in the class, we're going to teach about polygons. When you're done being condescending, go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably... Yeah, I would definitely I, want it to be polygonal. I think the... Um, the technology and the architecture of, of gaming and stuff has come to the point where we can start using a lot more of the po polygonal you know things. Anyway, because, because, because like just even a year ago um, it was very challenging because of the fact that there's still people with older computers that can't, that can't uh, render that 
as well as they probably can now. So I could see the, a lot of future games being much more like that. The the you know high high end. You know, was it Crisis that that was used as a benchmark for a lot of computers because it was so oh yes yeah so strenuous on a lot it's of uh, hardware. It's still strenuous to this day. Yeah. It's, un it's unbelievable. And so you know we're looking at a at a future here within maybe a year or so where we're going to start seeing computers that can handle that with no problem. Even some of your you know and prices are even going down for some of this stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I'd love to see that too. You know what uh, I find really interesting about the time we live in? When, when I was growing up, and I, I grew up, the Super Nintendo would, like when I started looking to video games and stuff, the Super Nintendo was like all the rage, and then the N64 came out. And all I heard from my friends was how awesome the graphics were. And I look at it, and you compare it to Super Nintendo, and you're like, your mind is blown. And then it only is, it's only gone up from there. And, and then yeah. we get into now, where indie games are starting to become like all the rage, and retro everything, and people yeah. are playing games with like the crappiest graphics ever, and no one cares because gameplay is now trumping graphics. So Rogue Legacy looks like something on the Super Nintendo, and because of how fun the gameplay is, people love it regardless. And I think that's awesome. And, well, then you, know what? you bring up yes. an interesting point because seriously, uh, sometimes graphics. You know, like for instance, a first-person shooter, you're going to want some pretty decent graphics in the game. But if the gameplay is just not there, you know, it's great to look at, but it's not fun to play. And I think you're right. I mean, a, a good game, I think, is is gameplay. Graphics should be secondary. True. Yeah, Especially well, look at Worm Online. Like, Worm Online is doing everything it can to look really nice. But right. you go in to play it, and I understand the concept and why it's so slow, but they make it worse by making the GUI like ridiculously Skewing. stupid. Yeah, it's yeah, it's awful. Well, they started out with just the mechanics of the game, and they worked on graphics later, which they kind of did the way out we were discussing here. <clears throat> but now that they're working on, you know, heavily, uh, you know, they're working on animations on stuff like that. They are working on the UI a little bit, so hopefully they'll be fixing that soon. But like I, I said, so. they, they were working on the mechanics. Rather than the graphics, they had the, the the environment perfect. You know, I mean, you got the trees, you got the you know mountains and the the water and all that stuff was good. Um, and that's what they that was their base. But they had no animations, they had nothing, and now they're starting to you know work on well, that. Well, another good example would be good. RuneScape, because okay, so RuneScape is this really old. It's been around ten years. This old RPG, free to play, but you can pay for membership, whatever. The first RPG I ever played, and or MMORPG, I should say. I think Pokemon was the first RPG I ever played. So you go into this world, and the graphics were crappy back when I first started playing it. But I still liked yeah, it because of the like gameplay. That. But now all they've been trying to do since I started was make the graphics nice. They f they're finally at a point where the graphics are good, but they've changed the game so much that people hate it, and they had to release the RuneScape Classic. And people play that more right. than they play the new one. And they just released RuneScape 3. And it's all about HTML5, and they've updated the graphics even more, and added all these quests, and people still prefer Classic. And Classic looks like utter crap. But and that's, yeah. they just prefer the gameplay. So it's not... All, I guess my point was, it's not all about graphics, which I think if, if I could make a game, I would still focus a lot on graphics. Because I'm starting to see it so much that I, I kind of... Sometimes I just miss nice 3D looking games like Halo. <laughs> well, sometimes people, I know a lot of this from working in, in movies, that when people go see the movie and they don't like it, it doesn't matter how spectacular the graphics could have been. Some people, and not all, but some people do say, because the story was bad, that the graphics were horrible. Even if it was mind-blowing, some people do still say, they still make that connection for some reason. So they're like, oh, the game was horrible, therefore the graphics were bad. Like, they just automatically lump it all together when, in in all actuality, the gameplay could have been amazing, but the graphics could have looked bad. Or the gameplay was horrible, but the graphics were really good. But a lot of people just don't do that. They're just like, no, it just sucked. What you don't like about it? Oh, the, well, you know, the story was bad, and the graphics were okay. But then you also find the people who are like, oh, my God, the game was amazing, and the story was so good, and the graphics were great, because they're lumping it all into one category, even yeah. though the graphics yeah. may not have been awesome. 
Right, yeah. There's right. a lot of people out there that are like that. People find one flaw in something and don't appreciate anything else. They just focus on that one flaw. Yeah. And that kind of sucks. That's I've had people turn away Minecraft simply because they look at it once and go, oh, this looks like some 8-bit piece of crap. And they don't appreciate the game for what it is at all because they don't care. They that's don't... a great example of a game that's not like top-of-the-line graphics but has incredible gameplay. Yeah. And it's like, you know... I think Minecraft really turned is... it around. <clears throat> For... Yeah, that's where that's when you started getting all your retro games. You notice all the retro games coming out. You notice all the side scrollers, blocky pixel games, now. pixel. Yeah, it's just amazing. everything's pixel art. And it was. It stemmed from Minecraft because before that, they were focusing a lot on heavy duty graphics with, you know, and now look. I mean, it seems like retro's returning. <laughs> that's not a bad thing. With a well, that's what retro means. Returning. <laughs> Duh. It's returning with a vengeance. Yeah. And it's almost to the point it's oversaturated. Like every single game you look at, especially with indie games, every single like game you look games. at, yes. it's all it's all retro looking, which is fine. I'd but like at to some see point a... it's just going to be like, really? Yeah. Because... I'd like to see a good third person or first person 3D indie game. That, that that's what that's what we need to see. Yeah, we don't Something have anything except for Minecraft right now, I don't think. I, don't, I haven't seen too many first person indie games like that. Since Minecraft, I'm sure they're out there. Yeah. Worm Online. Might Hawken be one. started that way. Hawken. Hawken. I, it's a game. I I really I know don't know a whole lot about it. It's about mechs, and the guys that started it actually started it as a small indie group, and they were making a, a polygonal based game, and it was all about you jump into mechs and and you fight people, and it's all like I don't, it's not post apocalyptic. You really have to look it up. I do not know a whole lot about it. And a larger company came to them and bought bought the idea. They were like, we would love to make this a full-time game, and they sold it. They sold the, the rights to the game, but they actually started out making a 3D polygonal game. So wow. people are out there doing it, but a lot of the times... It if, gets bought it's, out. Yeah, it, it'll get bought out if it's a grand enough idea. I, I think that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Yeah, like you were saying, Minecraft, that, I haven't seen one like it. I've seen Minecraft clones. Oh, yeah, I've seen clones, I've seen people, you know. Cube World. But Cube World isn't exactly a clone. It's I, it's, its own thing, but it's using the No, but the, it's, it's kind of in this, it, it's voxel-based, yeah. but... Well, talking about Minecraft and the game before, the one that, that, that actually Notch was inspired by was Infaminer. And I think that would have been an excellent game as well. Um... It could have went places, uh, but unfortunately, the the developer basically said, "I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore." Because uh, every time he tried to fix something, somebody would figure out a way to hack it, and it just ruined it. So he stopped on development. And when he did, that's when Notch picked up Minecraft and started doing Minecraft. But um, yeah, um, Minecraft has definitely opened a lot of doors. Well, before Minecraft, a lot of different. There's another game that I was obsessed with, and I still am. I just haven't ever played it really since Minecraft. The Warframe. What? No. Warframe. Warframe. No. Warframe. <laughs> uh, Little Big Planet on the PlayStation. And oh, yeah. I loved that game because it did something that no other game I had ever seen did. For one, it's a 3D looking game. It's like very, very three dimensional. The graphics are fantastic. They're very animated and cartoony, but they're also really good. It's a side scroller though, and you can take this game and pretty much they encourage you to make your own levels. And so it's not like they give you some objects and you put them around places. You actually get editors to make your own objects. So you can draw in thin air. You can take, let's say, you want to use wood as your your you know resource to make it with, and you just take your your thing and draw up whatever it is, and you can put wheels on it and drive it around. Or you can put rockets on it and fly it up in the air, you know. And it kind of like Gary's mod. <laughs> I haven't seen. Yeah, I haven't never played Gary's mod, but I've heard it has some similar traits like that. Yeah, you can do all kinds. Kind of like Scribble Knots. Scribble Knots. Scribble no. Scribble Knots has its own things built into it. So you you type machine gun and it'll give your character machine gun. This, if you want a machine gun, you got to draw it yourself, and you know you can make something that actually has projectiles. And it shoots things, and you can make a little enemy for it to shoot at. 
and the possibilities are quite literally endless and it's only on PlayStation so I that's why I think it it didn't you know it never trended as big as it should have cuz I think if something like that was on PC it would be just as big if not bigger than Minecraft cuz that's the one thing Minecraft is lacking is the ability to invent your very own object that you can take around you can do redstone all day long which is you yeah. know, like electricity in Minecraft you can invent things with that but you can't take it anywhere with you and I think yeah, it's so cool. If you, mod, if you create a mod, then you can put your own object in the game, but that's the only way you can. Yeah. Hopefully they make that a little easier. See, that would be cool. I think that's what I was going to say. What I was getting to was if I were to make my own video game, I want it to look kind of like Little Big Planet, but have more... So Little Big Planet's a side-scroller. I'd want it to be like in Minecraft, though, with no blocks, but just a world that's just open and three-dimensional, and you walk around, and then you can just... You build things... Maybe you gather resources to do it, but you can invent your own thing and drive it around or, you know, a flying house or whatever you want. Kind of like Second Life. Second Life involves coding, though, right? I mean... Speaking of Second Life, how's actually, that family no. do in Lido? Actually, no. You know, um, <laughs> there is no... Unless you want to put code behind something, most of it you just build with blocks or you start out with a block and then you stretch it and texture it and... Really? You got yourself... Yeah. I never knew that. I thought you had That's to use code. No. no, no. You go in the game, you right-click on the ground, you say create, and a block appears. And then you mold that block however you want. You can stretch it, make a wall, and then you add a texture to it by going to Google and looking for stone textures. Then you can upload the stone texture into the game and then apply it to your item. That's how people make things in there. But if you want, you can add code behind it. You know, like uh, there are door scripts so that when you click on a door, it'll open and close. So what you do is, I think when you start a, when you create a character or a Second Life character, you, you automatically come equipped already in your inventory with, a, with a, a number of scripts that you can put in your objects that are already made. Yeah. All you have to do is drag them into the object. So if you make a door, you just drag the door script into the door and it'll work. A little bit of tweaking here and there, but for the most part, that's all you do. Huh. So, yeah, in Second Life, you can do that, too. I didn't know that at all. That game's been around forever, too. Micro sent us a text at our phone number, 217-570-noob, and says if he could make a game, it would be a roguelike MMORPG. I love that. A roguelike MMO. I <coughs> thought of that. that does and sound. Minecraft actually, again, almost. You can do that with Minecraft because you can make hardcore mode. And hardcore mode, if you die, you get on a server. If you die, you you can't go back. You're done. Yeah. Like you're dead forever. And I always thought that'd be really cool. Not not for an actual like AAA title, but for an experiment. Like, you get a, wor a Minecraft world, you put no mods or any rules on it, and you let the people do whatever they want with it, and everyone has one life. So either it turns into a bloodbath, or people, you know, you give them a list of goals, and people try to work together to achieve them, but if someone, let's say, starts griefing, and they get caught, the rest of pe the people can take justice into their own hands and kill him, you know. Uh, but that, I think that'd be yeah, the closest awesome. thing. If we wanted to do that, I think that'd be the closest thing to a roguelike MMORPG ever. You know what I think we should do? What? I've just come to this great realization. Run with me on this, okay? Okay. Just run with me. Just go ahead and tell me you're going to invest all your money into it. I know it's a good idea. All $5 is yours. All $5 is mine. So I put in $1.50. <laughs> I gave you three fifty. <laughs> I gave him a dollar. <laughs> um, I th it's, it's really funny that we brought this up to talk about because when you... When you really look at this, you really understand a person by what kind of game they would make because obviously they're going to pick games from what they like. Because I started thinking back, it's like, what, what actually, if I actually had to pick a game, I would actually make a first-person shooter because I love first-person first shooters. I, I, that's Halo and all that stuff. I, I've always been a fan. And it, this also kind of stems from the other day, Vortech and I were talking about how sometimes he gets bored with games really fast. He's like, I don't want to play this right now. Let's go something else. And I was like, it's because I noticed that he likes games. Not not all games, but he's, he's, he likes a lot of games. But he likes a lot of games that aren't objective-based. That's why he loves Minecraft and stuff like that. It's because 
He can make he his can own do, objectives. Do anything, yeah. Yeah, you can do anything. Where me, I, I personally like games more that give me an overall big objective. I don't like making my own because then I just get bored. And Vortex's idea of a game is that if he could make a game sound exactly like Minecraft, but with an extra extra kick in there of making your own stuff. So my idea is that we should start a video game nerd dating service and <laughs> offer this. <laughs> You, you were not going no, where I thought you were going. You told me you'd give me your money. You told me you would give me your money. But <laughs> Five dollars. Sold. I've got. I've got. That's all I promised. Uh, six fifty. I've got six fifty. I can start. We got six dollars fifty cents. I'm gonna go take four ninety five of that. Go get me some Starbucks. Because <laughs> <laughs> I need a little bit of petty cash, you know. There you me. go. This is my idea. But we should start. A video game dating service where people decide what kind of games they would want to make, and then you match people up. Isn't that great? Here all week. Don't forget to be waitress. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, not no. A, it really does. It a, really shows you what kind of person. Well, kind of person this would. Is you're by, you're by talking a very specific audience. I mean, because not, not only is it people who are well, okay. This is going to sound funny, but not only is it people who are single, they also love video games. So we've already limited our dating audience quite a bit. Cause Some people it's gonna really be, need our help. Dating websites, are, as I imagine, are probably mostly dudes as it is, like lonely, desperate dudes. And then, like, you know, for every ten dudes, probably, like, one desperate chick. <laughs> so, and then you, you add video <laughs> games to the equation. What? Uh, you add video Ladies games to the equation. Ladies are not desperate. We're fishing. We're talking, like, 50 dudes to one desperate, nerdy chick. <laughs> that's just being nice. I'm. It's probably more realistically like a thousand, because pretty much all guys like video games. So you, take every that's single right. guy, and then match him up with nerdy, desperate girls who like video games, and you have the most. You have the least successful dating website ever. The end. <laughs> I'm. I'm so mean. So what you're I saying is. I took is... your idea. And... <laughs> so I can still go. get Starbucks with this six fifty. Yes. No. You Sweet. Can... I'm going. Bye. <laughs> And that's it for the podcast. Starbucks run. Star <laughs> what? Yeah. Don't judge me. I'll get you something too. What do you want? I'll get you a water. Th you wow. A you know, I did something um, on my other YouTube channel where I I went into Second Life and created Minecraft in it. What? And I I made a video of it. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I I used to do a series called uh, It's Got Minecraft in it. And so I'd find games where Minecraft was in it. Like, for instance, Borderlands 2 had that little secret area where, you know, you can kill the giant creeper and you can get stuff from there. There was a couple other games that I played that had that, and I, uh, I made a, a... But one of them was Second Life, how I was able to bring Minecraft into Second Life. By the way, for me, that's where Leto Dreadlow comes from, by the way. Because it was I the last was name that name. Second Life... Second Life gives you the last name, and then you have to come up with the first name. And Leto was a character that I used to play in Dungeons & Dragons. So I used Leto, and then Dreadlow came up, and I used that. That's where I got that. So I don't no, know you as anything else. That's not my real name. <laughs> so I that's really why don't. I wanted to cut the Leto off, because it was associated with Second Life, and I'm trying to get away from that. But anyway, um, so, Dan, yes, Vortac, if you want to uh, play Minecraft... And you want to be able to build whatever you want? Great. Let's go into Second Life. I'll set you up a whole Minecraft world. No, let's go play <laughs> Sims 3. I want to lock you both in a room and make you pee the floor until the Reaper comes and gets you. <laughs> because that is the quintessential thing to do in Sims 3. If you don't know that, you need to... You need to quit gaming and go find a hobby. That was completely oh, random. Like doing some, completely uh, random. <laughs> I was thinking he, Sims Every 3. time he says Second Life, Sims 3. You think of Sims 3? <laughs> well, that and that other game you were playing the other night with your family where they wouldn't pick up the socks. Oh, oh. yeah, 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 virtual families. <laughs> you just kept yelling to pick up the socks. <laughs> yeah, he's he playing this game and none of us know what the hell he's talking about. And all he's doing is yelling at these little characters to pick up their socks. I right. was looking for an alternative to Animal Crossing because like Vortac plays that and it drives me nuts because he shows me <laughs> what he's doing and I want to play it so bad and I can't. I've tried you know, all these ways of trying to play it and I can't do it. So I was trying to find an alternative and I found Virtual Families too. 
and it's so awesome because I can I can actually shut the game off and it's still going. I mean, it doesn't actually go. I can shut my computer off, but the 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 time is going. So when Sounds I like awesome. if, if I exactly that's what I like about Animal Crossing was the hey. fact that it's always going. If I go on to Virtual Families 2 right now. Uh, remember, they were like 48, socks everywhere. 48 years old. <laughs> now they're probably like 52, and you know, and once they die, and I get a new generation of families, then it unlocks more rooms, and I can start creating more rooms for the new family, and then I can go on from there. It's just, it's kind of neat. Um, there's no, no crafting or nothing in it, like, you know, not like in not crafting, but. Um, you There's, know, like you got an Animal Crossing, farming I just, stuff, I just want fishing you know, or anything like that. I got my silver shovel yesterday and my silver fishing rod today. And I thought of you. And I was like, Lita would love to. Oh, I can't. <laughs> so maybe you should just go out and buy it. Maybe you should. I, I have a plan on I'm going to get a, a Nintendo DS a uh, XL th 3D. You got to get the XL. 3DS. Yeah. Yeah, it'll definitely it'll to. be the XL. I won't, I won't get anything less than that. And that will be the game I guess, Animal Crossing. And as Micro says, you can make a money tree. You can. You have, there's money rocks. When you oh. get the silver shovel, you can hit, like, well, what, what did you hit yesterday? Did you hit a money I rock or did you hit, like, a regular rock? I hit a money and rock. And you kept getting gems. Yeah. I just, I want to kidnap the developer. I want to stick him in a closet, all chained up with his fingers free and tell him make a PC version now we gotta go it's, Lito's gone freaking it's Nintendo <laughs> it's Nintendo kidnapping but they will um, never they do that know this guy. and it sucks I know they'd never do it that's what sucks they come out with a great game and, and they haven't you know and nobody's come on there's gotta be somebody out there who can it doesn't have to be look just like Animal Crossing just to have the same it has some nice principles idea to it yeah you know you it's should do the it. Same ideas. Yeah, you do it. <laughs> oh. You know, you could make no, a Minecraft fine. world though that follows those rules. I can make a Minecraft world right now. Yeah, but it's got to be a server. It it's got to all be constantly running. No, it doesn't. Well, yeah, yeah of course. Minecraft. Actually, no, it does have to be constantly running if you want that dynamic. Wow, that's loud. If you want that dynamic Sorry. of. Oh, <laughs> if you want the dynamic of a, a game that's always running while you're not playing. You got to get a Minecraft server. We got to mod it so the sun goes up and down with a certain time zone, and then you got to put NPCs in it that have their own regimen, and they give you little tasks and stuff to do every day. But you could do it. You can make a Minecraft server very similar to that feel of Animal Crossing. And I, you know, it's so funny when I had my Minecraft server. That's what I was trying to do. If you remember, I was trying to come up with NPCs that will talk to you, and I had some on there. I had one named God, actually. <laughs> And he would sit up there. That'd be the first person you meet. But um, I, you know, just anything like that. I mean, I can't find anything that's like that game. Well, yeah, you should you just could. buy that game. The the one thing about Animal Crossing, I'll I'll say that a lot of games, even if you did do all that dynamic stuff, they it, most of Animal Crossing is all about collecting. You, there's there's yeah, so many items to stuff. collect, and that that goes back to what I was saying about Little Big Planet versus Minecraft. You can't make items in Minecraft unless you're getting to heavy modding. So, Animal Crossing is full of really unique furniture sets, and that's one of the things you collect, as well as fossils and things to fill your museum and fishing and right. So and, you and need there's goals. You I know. mean, you try to get this or try to get that, you know. And and it's like you're working with the people in your little town, you know, making money, trying to get you know whatever. You go fishing, you find get that rare fish, and there's 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 lots of little mini stuff within the game that, that just just you entice you to keep playing. You're swimming in this version. Lito, yeah, you're see, swimming. I mean, come on. That's crazy. It's so hot out. Don't so you want to you go swimming need, in the beach? You would need a mod that adds all kinds of fish, and then you need a mod that adds all kinds of bugs that you can catch. And So you could do it. It would, I guess it would require a lot of modding. So you could do it on a very basic level where it's just a dynamic world with NPCs that give you little quests, or you could do it on a grand scale that has all these collectibles and everything else but with but, minecraft I mean, it, you can do it which is nice about that's what's nice it's about so game. random too i mean you go into animal crossing and if i do exactly the same things you did i would still get different outcomes yeah cuz it, it's 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 it it randomly does things it's it's like a real living 
entity and you're in it and, and if you shut the game off, it doesn't matter. That thing is still going. And no matter what happens, it's going to be different than somebody else's gameplay. That's well. What if on. you what if you had a server where you got game. what if you had a server where you got a limited number of space, like a limited like let's say one thousand by one thousand or something. That's your town, and you you make this town whatever. But then you open up the doors to travel to other towns on the same server. So everyone has their own town, and then on the server you can travel to other towns, you know, and see what other people are doing. So it's like Inception. It's a town within a town. Yeah. See, now I can see wow. that as a, as an an that yeah, I can see That'd that as a close. future Animal Crossing. That if someone really worked hard on it, you could make Animal Crossing within Minecraft, and you could do it on that scale where someone comes in and you give them their own town, and it would take a lot of people to keep it up to date and stuff, but you know, and then you can do whatever you want in that town. Maybe you know build certain things or there's no building at all and there's all kinds of tasks you do and you can trade things with other pl so yeah like it would require a lot of all money, right but i'm gonna do it i'm gonna see what I, well i always say that and i never yeah, you never anything. do did you buy rogue legacy yet no <sighs> see he said he would after this podcast <laughs> you leave and you go get that game you realize you i promised. live in, you realize i live in hell right and because I live in hell, it is 120 degrees sometimes here. And because of that, my air conditioner runs 24/7, which means my electric bill is $267 this month. Uh, ouch. So take 15 of that that you would have used for like four days of Starbucks. <laughs> <That's> cool. <laughs> and maybe walk to work one day instead of driving and buy Rogue Legacy. <laughs> you wow, promised me. I know, I'm gonna get it. Well, I'm we're all, get it. unfortunately we are all out of time. Oh, oh I was having fun we do a with Mad this. Lib? We haven't done a Mad Lib in forever. I know, but we have like a minute. <laughs> what will we call this we'll game? We'll end though? the podcast like on Before iTunes we end and it. keep the Twitch running. For we... what? What will we call this mod? Critter Lito's Crosswalk. Mod? Huh? Critter Crosswalk. <laughs> Critter Crosswalk. <laughs> Critter Crosswalk. <laughs> Why? Creeper Kingdom. Creeper no. Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do it. I'm serious. I'm going to look into it and see how, how hard that would be to do. There's somebody had to have already done it. That's the thing. I don't understand. I'm still interested in the Minecraft server with one life. I might do something like that with our community. I'm going to look into that. Back to Minecraft with you guys. Yeah. I know. We're too. We're There's two. other now, games now out got, there. The thing is, but, the people have come up with ways where you can actually have one server... With a bunch of worlds, and each world has its own mods. Yeah. I mean, it's getting crazy. I wish I had a server right now so I can <laughs> fool around with that stuff. But uh, you could do that on one of your worlds. Make it uh, insta-death. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to look into it. And I, if, if we go into anything, I will uh, let you guys know next week. But all right. Thank you guys for listening to the Everything New Podcast. It's episode 40. Yep. We've got to do something crazy for episode 50. We got it. Yeah. Don't forget That's our new phone way. number, 570, no, 210570 noob. Sorry, I almost messed that up. And if you don't yeah. know how to spell noob on your keypad, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're really a noob if you no. <laughs> <laughs> then you Then you're completely qualified to call the number. All right. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. Adios. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Everything Noob podcast. Be sure to visit everythingnoob.com for previous episodes, show notes, host bios, and blogs. And while you're there, feel free to write us with any questions, comments, or suggestions you may have. Don't forget to check out the links to our Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch TV channel as well. On behalf of the noobs, see you next week, and happy gaming.